Do you remember the 2013 Billboard Music Awards? Because they were chaotic. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Just like my previous videos, I've been going back and covering the most messy and chaotic award shows, and the 2013 Billboard Music Awards are no exception. Well, yes, I am at the beach, but as you know, the grind never stops. Heading into 2024, I am still feeling nostalgic for the 2000s, so I wanted to cover one of the early 2000s Billboard Music Awards. However, a lot of you had commented on my channel about the 2013 Billboard Music Awards. So I had to check it out. Let's jump right into it because a lot happened. The show starts off with a performance of Treasure by Bruno Mars. I think it is important to mention that Tumblr chose this year's Billboard Music Awards as the basis for their first live TV integration. Tumblr users were able to produce animated GIFs during the broadcast and post them directly to Tumblr. Technology is crazy! This year's host, Tracy Morgan, comes out to the stage. She shouts out all of the female songwriters in the house tonight, including Celine Gomez? Talented female songwriters. Celine Gomez, Keith. Yeah, yeah. He then makes this joke about Taylor Swift. They would write a song about your ass. If you forget to open the fact that she had to put up with the same joke for years. If you forget to open up the car door, car door will be the number one single next month. Tracy! Forgot to open up the car door. Ah! It's a mess. The queen of rap, Shania Twain, then comes out to the stage to present the award for top rap artist. For obvious reasons, Billboard wanted me to present the award for top rap artist. <laughs> because when you think about rap, you think Shania Twain. Does this imply that we are getting an award for bottom rap artist? Burst rap artist? Dom bottom rap artist? Top or bottom? Oh. Bottom, of course. The nominees are Flo Rida, Drake, Nicki Minaj, Psy, I mean, I guess, and Pitbull. Nicki Minaj wins. We then get to see a performance by Selena Gomez doing Come and Get It. Her performance begs the question, did she culturally appropriate or did she culturally appropriate? Eight. Oh, that's no. in the sense that no. you know what I mean. Like when I'm saying that because the production of Come and Get It has Indian music influences, Selena decides to rock a bindi and do Bollywood dance moves. She received a lot of public backlash about this cultural appropriation, and she basically said, "No." Thank you. I'm disengaging. I am not engaging. Are you serious? Jennifer Nettles then comes out to the stage to introduce the band Perry performing Better Dig 2 that has a very cool drumming sequence. My Queen of Pop and the lady that decided to hold a 30,000 person meet and greet that only had 20 people show up, Carly Rae Jepsen then comes out to the stage. She introduces Icona Pop performing I Love It without Charlie XCX. For those that do not know, Charlie XCX was originally not featured on the song, even though she wrote it, and you can hear her demo vocals on the official version of the track. This led her name to be tagged on at the end after the fact. Psy then comes out to the stage and he is interrupted by Tracy Morgan dressed up as the guy in the Gundam style video. They then have a dance battle that just feels really sad to me. It feels like America just said to Psy, dance, dance for us. To the dance. Just as Selena Gomez took us to India, we get a performance by Chris Brown who takes us to China to perform Fine China. We get a dance break where Chris Brown fights the rest of the dancers filled with a bunch of comical sound effects. <laughs> Make that face. Uh -oh. Alyssa Milano and Melissa then come out to the stage. <laughs> they present the award for top digital song. The nominees are We Are Young by Fun featuring Janelle Monet, Somebody That I Used to Know by Gautier featuring Kimbra, Call Me Maybe by Carly Rae Jepsen, Thrift Shop by Macklemore and Ryan Lewis featuring Wands, and Payphone by Maroon 5 featuring Wiz Khalifa. Call Me Maybe wins. Uh, 
and Justin Bieber and everyone at Schoolboy as well. She also thanks her boyfriend Matthew Comer, a successful songwriter that is now married to Hilary Duff. Why has he not gotten her into the studio? Hayden Panettiere then introduces Macklemore and Ryan Lewis doing a performance of a song that I am 100% sure was secretly promoted by the thrift shop industry to boost sales. Thrift shop. All I want to say is none of you were shopping at the thrift shop before this song dropped. Kid Rock then comes out to the stage with a cup of tea and says this. Let's give it up for people lip syncing under pre-recorded music. He then presents the award for top rap song. The nominees are Wild Ones by Flo Rida featuring Sia, Thrift Shop by Matt Clamore and Ryan Lewis featuring Wands, Mercy by Kanye West, Big Sean, Pusha T and 2 Chains. Gundam Style by Psy, and Whistle by Flo Rida. Being nominated twice in one category, his impact. Thrift Shop wins. First and foremost, gotta thank Goodwill. Selena Gomez then comes out to the stage to introduce Taylor Swift doing a performance of 22. The performance starts off backstage before entering the main venue. She is joined by the Jabberwockies. There is a tiny little dance break and you know what? She kind of ate with that shoulder jolt dance move. Well done, mama. Florida Georgia Line then come out to the stage to introduce Casey Musgraves performing Merry Go Round. Will I Am then comes out to the stage to present the award for top touring artist to Madonna for the MDNA tour. During her acceptance speech, Madonna says this. It took longer to negotiate whether I could show my ass in that trailer than it took to rehearse for my tour. Um, a lot of ass negotiations. Anyway. You can also see Kylie Rae Jepsen in the crowd raising her eyebrows in a way like, spit it out, man. Say what you gotta say. Come on. Um, I don't. Ariana Grande then comes out to the stage. Contextually, this awards was one month before the debut of Sam and Cat on Nickelodeon. They would have been in the middle of filming season one of this show during this night, which reminds me of what Jeanette McCurdy wrote about Ariana Grande in her book. During the filming of an episode of a show where Ariana Grande was absent for the entire episode because her character was stuck in a box, Jeanette wrote, So I have to turn down movies while Ariana's off whistle toning at the Billboard Music Awards this. This would have been referencing the 2014 Billboard Music Awards where she performed Problem, however I'm bringing this up now because I want to. Ariana introduces Justin Bieber performing Take You. This performance is set on Bieber Air. Please fasten your seatbelts, put your tray tables up, and let me take you on a great adventure. I wonder if they fly to Gag City. I want to fly on Bieber Air. I'm going to Korea and Japan in a couple weeks and I am unfortunately not flying on Bieber Air. The flight attendant's outfits are a sleigh. Emmy Rossum and Jason Derulo then come out to the stage to present the award for top Billboard 200 album. The nominees are Red by Taylor Swift, 21 by Adele, Up All Night by One Direction, Babel by Mumford & Sons, and Take Me Home by One Direction. Nominated twice in one category. Their impact. Read by Taylor Swift wins. Key Dollar Sign Ha comes out to the stage to introduce Pitbull and Christina Aguilera performing Feel This Moment. Morton Harkett from AHA then comes out to the stage to perform a little bit of Take On Me, the song that is sampled in Feel This Moment. Miley Cyrus comes out to the stage to promote her upcoming single. I'm excited to be here and tell you guys my new single, We Can't Stop, will be out June 3rd. That's the reason why I'm here tonight. Thank you guys so much. She then presents the award for Top Male Artist. Where is the award for Bottom Male Artist? Bottom, of course. The nominees are Jason Aldean, Drake, Bruno Mars, Flo Rida, and Justin Bieber. When Miley reads out the winner, you can see some angst in her eyes. Am I reading too much into this? The Billboard Award goes to... Justin Bieber. Miss incoming, miss incoming. But first, since we've made it this far, please do not forget to subscribe if you have not done so already. Jennifer Morrison comes out to the stage to introduce Miguel performing Adorn. In the middle of the performance, Miguel jumps over a segment of the crowd to another part of the stage, however, lands on top of two audience members. <laughs> The one on the right's head was kicked into the stage floor by his foot and it seems like a massive 
ouchie. Afterwards, the woman appeared in an interview with Miguel holding an ice pack on her elbow, even though we clearly saw that she got hit in the head. <coughs> I see it's your elbow, so you're still gonna be able to dance. And you still adorn him, even though even though you've got an ice pack on your elbow. Uh-huh. That you're gonna, this is gonna be like the most memorable elbow injury of your life. With all respect to your elbow, we'll see this as a little bit of collateral damage, we'll avoid elbows in the future. The woman's lawyer stated that the woman found this interview offensive because they did not adequately treat her injuries, instead making her do an interview. One month after the incident, she was still suffering cognitive difficulties. She is actually a fellow New Zealander. She wanted to return back to New Zealand, but couldn't because of her ongoing treatment. Miguel did not offer to pay her medical bills. Might I add, if this was in New Zealand, it would have been free, but because it was in America, she would have had to incur thousands of dollars. Okay, he's gonna make up for it. I, I, I don't want to speak for Miguel. Let's Miguel, <coughs> Miguel, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. I think I think Miguel's a man that knows how to make things up to people. That's you, what I'm gonna get. You guess. have to make it up to her. The woman on his left's head was dragged into the stage floor by his leg. Once again, massive ouchie. After getting slammed, she quickly submerges into the audience to never be seen again. Two years later, the woman sued Miguel for negligence, which, I mean, it's kind of obvious. I'm a law graduate. I'm allowed to say that. The woman also sued the production company as well as the hotel that hosted the awards. The production company argued that they told Miguel to not do the jump, but then Miguel came back and said, uh-uh, you never said that, and I'm inclined to believe Miguel, because why else would they have a perfect camera shot at the ready to see his jump? if they did not think that he was going to do it. Quite frankly, they are all negligent, but I cannot find the outcome of this lawsuit, which makes me assume that it's settled out of court. Also, no shade, but also a little bit of shades of this blonde lady in the audience that saw this injury happen and decided to brush her away so she could hug Miguel. Chloe Grace Moretz comes out to the stage to introduce Ed Sheeran performing Lego House. Gabriel Mann and Stana Katik then come out to the stage to introduce Jennifer Lopez and Pitbull performing Live It Up. Taylor and Selena's dancing is giving mad year six school disco. During her performance, Jennifer prophesied her acting role in Hustlers. Also, she doesn't know what clapping her hands means. All I gotta say is, me gente Latino. Work It Man Sean Toos, Kelly Rowland, and Austin Mahone then come out to the stage to present the top EDM artist. The nominees are David Guetta, Dead Mouse, Calvin Harris, Skrillex, and Swedish House Mafia. David Guetta wins. Wiz Khalifa and Sky Blue then come out to the stage. And sometimes one plus one equals more than two. <laughs> they introduce Will I Am and Justin Bieber performing hashtag that power. I don't really understand why the producers are using Justin's mic feed when he is relying on the backing track. Jenny McCarthy then comes out to the stage to introduce David Guetta, Akon, and Neo performing Play Hard. CeeLo Green and Sharnice, the winner of the competition to present tonight, come out to present the Milestone Award. The nominees are Justin Bieber, Bruno Mars, and Taylor Swift. Justin Bieber wins and I can hear booing. This was during his bad boy era. During this period, he abandoned his pet monkey in Germany, was videoed urinating in a janitor's bucket, cursed at a photograph of Bill Clinton, <laughs> wore a gas mask in public and allegedly spat on fans from a balcony. All this other bull should not be, be spoken of. Um... Hey, don't be fooling nobody in here. This ain't the Apollo. Celine Dion then comes out to the stage to present the award for Artist of the Year. The nominees are One Direction, Justin Bieber, Rihanna, Taylor Swift, and Maroon 5. Taylor Swift wins and she ends her speech by saying this. You are the longest and best relationship I have ever had. We then get a performance of High School by Nicki Minaj and Lil Wayne. It is a great performance because Nicki is actually rapping the words. At the end, Nikki gives Wayne a lap dance.
Erica Badu and Janelle Monae then come out to the stage to present the Icon Award to Prince. He then does a performance of Let's Go Crazy and Fix Your Life Up. Tracy Morgan then comes out to the stage one last time to say goodnight, but his mic is not turned on at the beginning. And that is the end of the 2013 Billboard Music Awards. That was some chaos, babe. A quick reminder that I have a Patreon where I'm posting exclusive content right now. I have a video up on the 2011 VMA pre-show as well as the 2009 VMA pre-show. They were both hot messes. Click the link right here to go subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a comment down below telling me which award show I should cover next. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And heck, why not share with your friends? And I'll see you in the next one. See ya!